Hello, this is Investor Mind, and today we will talk about the Ponzi scheme. The tagline for Ponzi scheme is, if it is too good to be true, it probably is. So let's dive into the example of the Ponzi scheme. Ponzi scheme is a fraud disguised as an investment opportunity that pays existing investors out of money invested by new investors, giving the false appearance of earnings and profits. While it is possible that Ponzi scheme may involve some real investment, a Ponzi scheme is not a legitimate investment because the returns are not coming from profits earned by the organization. Rather, it is merely continuous transfer of money from new investor to earlier investor. Okay, so let's dive into the example. So, Robin Peter will say to PayPal, I can put your money to work for you. Don't ask me how. Just let me show you. Okay, the Ponzi scheme begins with an hour of exceptional guaranteed investment returns that cannot be found elsewhere, like 5% a week, 10% a month, or something like that. And then the fraudulent investor will first target those surrounding him or her in order to build his or her credibility and testimonials silly. So when someone invests $100 and then you return it for $105 after a week, the $5 comes from his or her pocket. The original investors are pleased that their investment returns are so lucrative that they begin to invest more and or encourage others to begin invest. Usually, the scammer will give a percentage of the return for the new investor, something like 3% or something like that. So someone will gather more investor. And then the influx of new fund is used to pay the returns and is pocketed by the scammer. Something like that. This is the vicious cycle of the Ponzi scheme. But when the house of cards will collapse, the main problem with Ponzi scheme investment is that it is difficult to sustain the scheme for so long because to continue paying the promised profits to early investors, you need an even larger pool of later investors. Therefore, the scheme relies on an infinite supply of capital, which is obviously not possible. Thus, Ponzi schemes are destined to collapse inevitably. Okay, so this is the most infamous Ponzi schemers. The first one is the Charles Ponzi. The schemes are named after a charismatic Italian immigrant who dubbed thousands of Americans into investing into a postage stamp scheme in 1920s. Ponzi did not invest this illegal scheme, but since his operation took in so much money, $15 million in 9 months, was the first successful scam of this type to become known throughout the United States. So, how did Charles Ponzi do it? Ponzi's plan was to buy cheap postal reply coupons from foreign countries and then exchange them for twice as much in the US. Seeing an opportunity to make profit out of this, he set his plan in motion and began soliciting investors. In reality, the actual profit on postal coupons never amounted to more than a fraction of a penny each. But it didn't matter to Ponzi, since this was not actually the source of his profits. The true source of profits came from the money he received from the new investors, which he would then use to pay in the extravagant rates of return to early investors. Okay, so Ponzi attracted lineups of gullible investors by promising to double their money in 90 days. Sure enough, everybody was happy with their results and word continued to spread like wildfire about this Italian financial wizard. Ponzi's scam was eventually exposed after one year as investors became informed that the amount of money Ponzi had allegedly invested in international mail coupons far exceeded the amount of coupons actually in circulation. Thus, his scheme was collapsed. I went looking for trouble, and I found it, Charles Ponzi said. 
Okay, the next scammer is the Bernard Madoff. This is America's most notorious fraudster, Bernard Madoff. He was able to operate his scheme for over 30 years by offering steady, adequate returns to investors, regardless of the direction of the market. Madoff swindled over $50 billion from investors, making this the largest Ponzi scheme ever uncovered and largest investor fraud in history to date. How did Madoff do it? Madoff, he is a former chairman of the Nasdaq Stock Exchange. He was well known on Wall Street due to his establishment and accomplished, respected expert in the financial field. Because Madoff was one of Wall Street's most sought after investment professionals with impeccable credentials, multimillionaire clients, ranging from most media personnel to giant business tycoons, came to Madoff seeking to invest. Because large amount of money kept coming in, Madoff was able to maintain the scheme for over three decades, 30 years. Unlike most scammers, Madoff was very clever. He did not promise outsized returns, maybe about 1% a month or 2% a month. And then he was selective about his investors, which made him desirable and exclusive. And that attracted serious wealthy investors. He knew how to skillfully lie to investors and regulators. For decades, Madoff investors received consistent and steady annual returns through elaborate fabricated account statements and other documentation that were provided to investors to convince them that their money had been placed in actual investment. In reality, there were no actual investment and no actual returns. Madoff was paying the initial investor returns with newer investors' money. He said, it's appropriate strategy. I can go into it in a great detail, Bernard Madoff said at 2001. And then, it's all just one big lie, basically a giant Ponzi scheme, said Bernard Madoff at 2008. One factor Madoff could not anticipate was the financial crisis in 2008. The economy was shaken and several investors began requesting cash withdrawals from Madoff. Madoff could not fulfill the requested $7 billion in redemption, and with his options limited, he confessed to his family and surrendered to authorities on December 11, 2008. The fallout from Madoff scams was widespread. The victims include everyone from his wealthy country club acquaintance Hollywood celebrities, banks and hedge funds to universities, charities, and ordinary individual investors, some of whom lost their life savings. I live in a tormented state, knowing the pain and suffering I have created. So, how can you prevent yourself from getting involved in a Ponzi scheme? Okay, first, you have to identify the red flags. If the scam if a high investment rates with little or no risk, then it is probably a Ponzi scheme. People looking to increase their capital or to get rich quick can find these risk free returns extremely appealing. As a result, they are easily tricked into unknowingly investing to, into a Ponzi scheme. And then, offering consistent returns. If the market goes up or goes down, most investment will also go up or go down with it. If an investment generates regular positive returns regardless of the market conditions, you have to be skeptical. And then the third red flag is secretive and or complex strategies. It's best to avoid investment if you do not now understand or cannot get enough information on. Take Madoff, who told investors that his method was too complicated for outsiders to understand. He answered all questions very critically and never revealed his strategies. And the fourth red flag is unregistered investment. Ponzi schemes typically involve investments that have not been registered with the Securities Exchange Commission or SEC or the state regulators. 
If you have something like SEC in your country, you should see the register list of investment opportunities. Okay, after that, you must do your research before you invest. Take the time to thoroughly research your investment manager and make sure they have not been arrested or investigated surrounding their business dealings. Compare the scheme's interest rate to the country's official rate. Average rate in a country is 5% versus a scheme's unusually high rate, 30%. Trust your instincts. If it is too good to be true, it probably is. Okay. So, this is the Ponzi scheme slide created by Downtown and can be accessed in Prezi.com. Thank you for watching.